Well, hello everyone, and welcome to Crystalline. Uh, this is a uh, visual novel that's gotten a ton of praise on Steam. Uh, I've been looking to uh, explore into this genre a bit more. So far, the only one I've played was a uh, Doki Doki Literature Club, and I don't really know that that's the uh, best possible representation for the genre. So let's just jump right on in, shall we? Oh, um, foo, nope, wrong button, there we go. Oh crap, I may have made an error. Foo, um, I got this guys, we salvaged it. See? The library is far more quiet than I would have expected at this time of night. The only sound is the gentle hum of the air conditioner. Whoa! That was too close. What was? I blink my eyes wide open. Then I stifle a yawn as I stretch to wake myself up. Focus! Finals are just around the corner, so I can't afford to slack off. Glancing around me, I notice that I'm the only person left in the study cubicles. It is getting pretty late. I'll go back to the dorms as soon as I finish this last chapter. I flip through the book. Only a few more pages to go. I can do this! Stealing my resolve, I refocus on my textbook. <gasps> the words on the book blur together as my eyelids grow heavy. I fight to keep my eyes open, but my lids continue to droop. I'll just rest them for a second. Something jerks me awake and my eyes blink open. A bright light illuminates the room, blinding me until all I can see is a stark whiteness. I throw my arm over my eyes to shield it from the light. Gah! After a few seconds pass, the light seems to dim, but it doesn't feel like the same fluorescent glow of the library bulbs. Carefully, I unwind and bring my arm down, squinting at a pale blue sky. A mild breeze tussles my hair. Blades of grass tickle my neck as they wave in the wind. Get a little tussle tussle going. All right. Where am I? I'm about to push myself off the, up off the ground when something pops into view. A round blue blob with two dark eyes blinks at me. Oh. Pie? Pie? It bobs slightly, like pudding. When it notices my stare, it opens its small mouth and takes a dainty bite of my no- What? Oi! The creature's bite doesn't sting, but feels like a cool splash of water. Before it can take another, I scramble to my feet. The creature tumbles off my head and falls to the ground. Once it lands, it shakes itself off with a gelatinous tremble, clearly unfazed. Yes. It hops onto my foot and opens its mouth again, but I quickly shake it off. It rolls off my foot and into the dirt, then rights itself again. Poi Poi! I love Poi Poi! That's such a good game! I wish Konami would bring it back. It pouts and continues to watch me, but doesn't attempt another bite. What is that thing? Poi? It cocks its head as if wondering the same about me. That's unsettling. I take in the scattering of trees around me. Their tall branches kiss the sky. There's a winding dirt trail which weaves through the trees. As I follow it with my gaze, I see smoke billowing out of thatched roofs of a village in the far distance. Where am I? The last thing I remember is studying at the library. That's it. I must have fallen asleep and I am now dreaming. I glance down at the blue creature. What? At my response, it leaps up. Boy, boy! Whoa! I scramble away from it and it lands back on the ground with a soft thud. That thing can jump pretty high. I need to be careful. What's your deal? Boy. It leaps again and I again retreat. Stop that! I dodge as it jumps. Then I begin to run. To my surprise, the blob keeps pace with a series of nimble bounces. Boy, boy. Seriously, stay back! It musters up one long leap, and I turn around the corner of a sturdy tree to avoid it. 
I don't notice the other person until too late. Oh. We painfully collide and I lose my balance before toppling over. Fortunately, my hands catch myself, protecting my fall. When I open my eyes, I see a woman. Ooh. Oh, hello. Her eyes are scrunched shut and her mouth is twisted in a grimace. Her long blonde hair is splayed out around her. As she lets out a small groan, she blinks open her eyes and fixes her gaze on me. Oh no. This isn't like a hentai game, is it? Should I not be, uh... Is this going to turn, take a dark turn for the channel? Okay, let me just apologize to her. M my bad! As I meet her gaze, my face flushes and I push myself to my feet. I'm so sorry, are you hurt? I extend a hand. She hesitantly accepts it and I help her up. Just a little sore, but otherwise I'm fine. Are you hurt? No, I'm fine. I'm sorry again. I should have paid more attention to where I was going. It's partially my fault. I was distracted. Boy? The creature is right by my foot again. Are you serious? You're still here? The woman looks surprised. A pongo! Pongo? Jeez, all that... All that polka man last night is making me see things. Polka man? Boy, boy? The pongo bobs up and down by my foot and nudges me with its head. Aww, he's a cute one! Aww. He? Yeah, you can tell by the shape of his eyes. Oh. I think he wants you to hold him. He's trying to eat me. I doubt that's what he wants. He tried to eat me earlier. Oh, don't be silly. He's harmless. The woman leans down and reaches for the pongo, but he hops away from her. You'll probably like this hand better. She extends her other hand and offers the pongo her gauntlet. He stares at it before turning away and hiding his face behind my leg. Boy! A pongo who refuses magic energy? Wait a minute. Are you a mage? That's not a real occupation. I'm a student. Of magic? Huh? No, a full-time post-secondary student. She seems confused. You keep saying such strange things. She holds up her gauntlet and a faint, pale light glows. It pulses rhythmically. As she holds it closer to me, it quickens until the pulses almost look like one long pulse. She blinks in surprise. Wait, this heightened energy activity, it's you? She analyzes the magic swirly thing on her gauntlet. We're getting very high tech here. I don't see a discharger on you. So then, how is it possible for you to have such a high magical energy reading? Are you carrying crystals? This is a sting operation. No way, man, I'm clean. Huh? I don't do drugs. Her eyes narrow. She looks me over again. Never mind. It doesn't look like you're carrying crystals. Or anything, for that matter. I don't know what's going on right now. I was in the library studying for finals and somehow I woke up here. So, are you from the Mage Academy? Okay, I think I've dozed off long enough. It's time to wake up now. She blinks in confusion. You she are seems awake. to do that a lot. Am I, though? No, this is a dream. She frowns. I can assure you this is not a dream. That's just what a dream would say. What a sleaze this game will allow me to be. Okay. Time for the pinch test. Could this actually be real? She definitely seems real. And that fall certainly hurt. I surreptitiously pinch myself and try to hide my wince. Um, got people that, uh... Uh dream a lot. Like, I never remember my dreams in, like, it is what it is. Um, people that do dream a lot, do you actually do this? Is this a thing that exists outside of, like, TV and movies where you pinch yourself to get a, to wake up? This seems, it, it seems like, like Hollywood nonsense to me, but, uh, whatever. All right. I believe you, because otherwise it, it's just going to make me keep going through all of these. 
maybe she's right. Maybe everything here feels too real. Oh, sorry. Everything here feels too real, even for a dream. I nod. So if this place isn't a dream, then where are we? We're in Meadow Hill. Meadow Hill? Where's that? It's a part of the Kingdom of Haven Guard, of course. <laughs> of course. Of Haven Guard? She looks at me like I'm crazy. It's the largest of the three kingdoms. Oh, I've played Romance of the Three Kingdoms before. I know what's up. All right, so where's Chao Chao, huh? Actually. Oh. Where are you from? Lu Bay, maybe? Oh, I'm from New York. New York? Yeah, you know, part of the USA. U.S.A. USA? No, the United States of America. The United States of what? How dare you. Only the greatest nation on Earth. Never mind that for now. If you don't have any crystals, and you don't have a discharger, have you casted recently? I shake my head. Then the amount of energy reading doesn't add up. She rests her chin in her hand as she thinks. A shiver runs through me as reality begins to set in. This really isn't a dream. Oh, because she put her hand on her chin? Jeez. Any ideas? She shakes her head. Maybe the Mage Academy can provide answers. Mage Academy? That's a start. Sounds good to me. How do I get there? Oh, it's in the center of Illumia. Oh, of course it is. Uh, where? Illumia. You follow the path going north until you arrive at the crossroads. Then you head- Please tell me my next question is what is north. Please tell me this. Her voice trails off as she notices my expression. I'm actually heading back there now. You can come along if you want. As I contemplate her offer, I look her over again. Can I trust her? Her posture is naturally straight and gives her an air of authority. She did mention she was out here on some sort of official investigation. Plus, she seems friendly enough. Besides, if I don't go with her, then I'll be wandering around on my own. The chances of me finding this Mage Academy alone without running into any unsavory people are not promising. I can't risk that. I need to find a way back home. I nod. Thanks. I'm Fugal Razmataz, by the way. I'm Leanna. Leanna Dawn. Nice to meet you. I hold out my hand for her to shake, but she just stares at it. After keeping my hand out for a few seconds, I begin to feel awkward. Her expression changes to curiosity as she gingerly takes my hand. I grin broadly as I shake her hand firmly. She's a bit startled, but when our gaze meets, she matches my smile. It's nice to meet you too. I look at her questioningly as she continues to shake my hand. She slips her hand away and blushes. Aww. Shall we get going then? Ready when you are. Leanna nods and brings us back onto the path. Then she walks in the direction of the village. The pongo follows us, staying a step behind. We travel for quite some time together. It's been pretty silent. I wonder if I should say something. Uh, ask about the pongo! I glance behind us again. Just as expected, the pongo hops along. So, the Pongo's still following us. Leanna glances back and grins. That's not too surprising. Why not? Pongos are attracted to magical energy. That's why it was so strange that it showed no interest in my manipulator. It's still following us, though. It's following you. Ooh. <laughs> my readings showed you're full of magical energy. As far as the Pongo is concerned, you're a buffet. Huh. As I think over what Leanna said, I look at the Pongo one more time. This time he looks right back at me and his eyes crinkle as he splits into a huge grin. Uh, he leaps up into the air and reaches the height of my waist. Whoa! He jumps high again. Leanna giggles. I think he's tired of hopping. Ugh. Fine. I'll carry him. I guess it can be kind of hard to keep up when you're so much smaller than us. I hold out my hands and the pongo hops right into my palm. But he doesn't stop there. Before I can react, he hops onto my shoulder and jumps again to land on top of my head. I feel a cool wiggle in my hair. Ooh. 
Leanna giggles again. What's he doing? <laughs> Nothing. He's just so happy. She reaches out a finger to stroke the pongo, who chirps contentedly. Leanna's smile broadens. Then she clears her throat as she tries to take on a more serious expression. Her steps quicken as she resumes walking. Ask her what brought her here. So, not that I'm complaining, but what exactly were you doing out in the field? The field? Where you found me. Oh, there have been rumors of high energy readings around Meadow Hill, so I was sent to investigate. I had already checked out the surrounding area, and there'd been no clear source for all that excess energy until today. <gasps> when you met me? She nods. I hadn't been in the field for very long before you found me, though. Hmm. You might be a byproduct of whatever created the energy spike in the first place. What do you think that was? I'm not sure. I haven't seen readings of that level before. The Mage Academy should be able to help explain. I wonder what it takes to become a mage. So besides magic, what else does the Mage Academy teach? Oh, all the basics. How to use a manipulator, how to control your energy, the many usages and differences between crystals and spheres. Crystal energy and spheres? What exactly is this crystal stuff you keep mentioning? You mean the difference between crystals and crystal spheres? Well, when we refer to crystals, we mean the raw crystals, whereas crystal spheres are the usable refined state. That's helpful, but I meant crystals in general. She stares at me and narrows her eyes as if trying to judge if I'm serious. It's the power source for, well, everything. I look blankly at her. You don't use crystals where you come from? Uh, no? Her mouth falls open and she looks at me in bewilderment. With no crystals? What else do you use to power things? Lots of stuff. I count off on my fingers. The sun, water, wind, nuclear fission, fossil fuels like coal or oil. Her eyes widen with each item I list. She's about to speak, but I'm not finished. Geothermal, waves, tidal, hydrogen... Okay, okay. She shakes her head incredulously. I get it. You have your own methods of energy. Many, many methods. Leanna's eyes sparkle as she falls into a pensive silence. A small smile plays at her lips while she considers what I've said. I might have overwhelmed her a little, but she actually seems interested in all our methods for harnessing energy. Ask about her gauntlet? Without seeming too suspicious, I try to get a better look at her gauntlet. What was that thing she was doing with it earlier? Leanna notices me staring and shifts uncomfortably. Are you okay? Yeah, I was just curious about your gauntlet. Oh, my manipulator? Uh, sure. All mages have a manipulator. It's how we use energy to interact with the elements around us. Wait, you mean you can cast spells? I suppose that's one way to phrase it. Whoa, can you show me something cool? Um, like what? <laughs> cast magic missile! Can you cast magic missile out the darkness? She furrows her brows. That's not possible. I look her straight in the eyes. You're right. She's very clearly confused by my response and is at a loss for words. I listen for the sounds of wildlife as we continue walking. I can hear the usual song of birds and the faint whoosh of wings flapping in the air. Occasionally, there's a rustle amid the trees, and I even swat at the bugs buzzing around my eyes. It all feels very familiar, reminding me of home. Liana clears her throat. So, you're from USA? USA, but yeah. Which kingdom is that in? Uh, how should I phrase this? In the Kingdom of North America. She frowns and scratches her neck. I'm a little ashamed to say I'm not familiar with that place. Where is it? On Earth? Earth? Okay, time to take a different approach. Let me see if I can explain. Alright, tell me, where are we right now? In Meadow Hill. And where is that? In the Kingdom of Havengard. And where is Havengard? In the land of Asaria. And what is that a part of? Terra, of course. Okay, so Terra is my Earth. She pauses as my words sink in. Then she gasps. Wait, are you not from Terra? From what I've heard so far, I'm not. She looks concerned. How did you get here? That's what I'm hoping the Mage Academy can tell me. Right, 
But, I mean, how did you come to Meadow Hill specifically? Do you remember anything before you were in the field? I think back. I was studying in the library and I'd been extra tired because that's the same day I have my evening class. And I still remember everything about me and my past. Yeah? Well, at least we know you don't have amnesia. I nod. She lapses back into silence, looking thoughtful. I have a lot to think about myself. My head is swimming with everything I've learned so far. Although there are some similarities between Terra and Earth, I've only scratched the surface on all the differences. I really hope the Mage Academy can help explain what is going on, and more importantly, how I can get back home. Oh, come on, Pongo. The Pongo flips in front of my eyes and I carefully scoop him back into place on my head. Whoa, what happened there? Did you slip? Poi poi. Is it my imagination or did that poi poi sound a little sheepish? Leanna looks over and grins. You were trying to get a good look at our friend here, weren't you? I feel movement on my head as I assume the Pongo nods. Looks like someone got a little adventurous and lost his footing. Ho <laughs> ho Poi. I let out a chuckle as Leanna giggles. Ha! <laughs> ah! Once the Pongo is secured, we continue walking. The sun dips in the sky and bathes the tips of the trees in a soft glow. My feet ache in protest with each step I take, and my legs are tight from all the walking. Finally, we come upon the perimeter of the village. Leanna grins as she leads me through the gates. Here we are! Meadow Hill Village! I take the time to catch my breath and discreetly rest my burning muscles. Leanna hardly seems affected by the long trek. I pull my arms into a stretch. Whew, that was quite the journey. Leanna masks a chuckle. A journey? I nod. This time she can't quite hold back her laugh. Let's continue. We can rest at the inn tonight. Oh, as she resumes walking, I ignore my screaming legs and follow her. The village is still bustling with people even at this time of day. I suppose they're getting in their last errands before nightfall. For the most part, everyone seems to focus on their own tasks. They barely glance at Liana, but when their glances, gazes are drawn to me, they don't look away. In fact, their steps slow and they crane their necks as we pass. Now I know how an animal feels at the zoo. Liana overhears my muttering and watches the people around us. It's your clothes. They're very peculiar. What I'm wearing is normal where I'm from. Even though the stares are directed at me, Liana seems equally uncomfortable. Okay, new plan. Let's stop by the shops before they close. We don't need to draw attention to ourselves. I instinctively pat my back pocket where I keep my wallet. I doubt they'll accept card here. Or dollars. I don't have any money. That's okay. I'll take care of it. Oh. That's really... Thank you, I really appreciate it. It's understandable given your circumstances. I'll pay you back once I can. Leanna smiles and nods. Leanna changes directions and leads me towards an adjacent street. There are rows of quaint shops lining both sides of the road. I read the signs as we walk by. Edward's Apothecary, Blackstone Forge, Dragonscale Armory. That's nice that all the signs are in English. Huh. What is it? I was just thinking how convenient it is that everything's in English here. English? I should have expected the question based on how our previous conversations have gone, but I'm still a little taken aback. It's what we're speaking now. We're speaking common. What? Leanna pauses in front of a shop and peers inside. Satisfied, she motions for me to follow. Never mind. Come on in. We're here. I step into the shop and the first thing I notice is the overpoweringly musty smell of leather. It's not surprising considering the walls are lined with different types of leatherware. A small elderly man emerges from the back. A pair of round glasses sits on his nose as an apron hangs around his neck. Welcome. Please, take a look around. His smile falters when he notices me. Liana clears her throat. We're looking for a new wardrobe for my friend here. Yes, yes, of course. The shopkeeper blinks back to reality and resumes his pitch. Well, you've come to the right place. 
We tan our hides and stitch the pieces ourselves. You won't find any finer quality than here. Leanna smiles politely and strolls towards the selections. I check out two seemingly identical leather vests, both of which are marked at different prices. I really can't see a difference between the two. Maybe they boost different stats. Hey, Leanna. She turns around. Which one of these will increase my... Uh... Dexterity. Um, I suppose leather armor will allow for greater range of motion while still providing decent protection. That's the benefit of the armor type. I mean, dexterity. She blinks. So, whoa. So none of these raise any stats? Leanna gives me a weird look. Do your clothes where you come from raise stats? Only if you consider cool points to be a stat. Hey, She looks just as confused as before. I think my character might- I might be playing an idiot. I feel like... <laughs> Never mind. She smiles as we continue perusing. One by one, Leanna and I pick out my new outfit. Once all the pieces have been chosen, she goes to haggle with the shopkeeper. I tune out of their discussion and watch the people passing by. Their clothing are simple in design, meant to be more functional than aesthetic. To my surprise, everybody walks around armed. This village doesn't seem dangerous, but looks can be deceiving. Why don't you get changed now? There's a space in the back to give you some privacy. I nod and take the clothes from her. Once I've ensured privacy, I quickly get changed. Luckily, these clothes have pockets and I can just transfer everything over. I palm my wallet, deck of cards, and loose change. Next is my phone. I try to turn it on just to see if it will work, but it doesn't react. The battery must be dead. I get the feeling they don't have wall chargers here. Shrugging it off, I slip my phone into my pocket too. When I emerge, Leanna gives me a once-over. How do I look? She grins and nods in satisfaction. Wow, look at you, just like a native. This look suits you. I match her grin. Thanks. Let's go find the inn now. Yes, let's. She heads out of the shop and I follow her. Actually, maybe we can stop by the armory? She pauses and looks curiously at me. Armory? You want to get a weapon? Uh-oh. The music all just stopped. Her question is careful, cautious. The goal is to blend in, right? It's weird that a person wearing leather armor is traveling unarmed. I look like a hostage or something. Hmm, you do have a point. Plus, it could come in handy. Why do I not like the sound of that? Do you know how to use a weapon? Again, although her voice holds no hostility, I can sense her caution. I practiced kendo competitively. She blinks. It's a type of sword fighting where I come from. I see. Leanna falls silent as she gazes out into the street. After an extended pause, she nods. We head to the forge where rows of blades ranging from long swords to short daggers hang from the wall. All of the blades look fairly plain, but the steel edges glint dangerously amidst the warm glow of the forge. Unlike the previous shopkeeper, the metalsmith ignores us as he pounds out a red-hot blade. Sparks jump from the clanging metal, reminding me of fireflies. Leanna lets me browse the swords. I reach for one that catches my eyes. As I gently remove it from the shelf, I miscalculate its weight and drop it! The steel scratches the ground with a sharp screech. The metalsmith pauses in his work to glower a warning. Leanna looks on in shock. Careful! I quickly write the sword back up and grip it tightly. Leanna now watches me with intrigue. Is this the first time you've held a sword? <laughs> I lift, bro. Dude. Practice ones only. Nothing beyond wooden swords. I take a practice swing and fumble the sword. Luckily, I tighten my grip and get it under control. Leanna looks uneasy. I swing again and the movement flows naturally. As the sword cuts through the air with a sharp thwing, I can't help but notice, but admire how smoothly it slices. This is high quality craftsmanship. Let's go with this one. 
As before, Leanna discusses with the shopkeeper. When she returns, I strap the sword to my belt. We make one more stop to gather supplies for our travel. By the time we're finished, the sun has set and darkness blankets the sky. The town is aglow with soft lights glinting, glint from within houses and the lampposts on the streets. As we pass by a lamppost, I peek inside and see a small crystal shining brilliantly. Using the lights to guide us, we find the inn. I take a seat at one of the crude tables while Leanna talks to the innkeeper behind the bar. There are a scattering of other patrons, mostly men who sit alone, nursing a tankard of what I assume to be ale. I stifle a yawn. Now that I've had a chance to sit down, I feel the full weight of my fatigue. Luckily, Leanna returns and hands me a key. This is your room for the night. It's right next to mine. Thanks. She nods. They should be coming out with our dinner soon. Then we should get to sleep. We have an early start tomorrow. My stomach grumbles in anticipation. Sorry. Leanna smiles as she sits in the empty stool next to mine. Our meals arrive and I stare at the bowl before me. It's a goopy, thick stew and looks about as appetizing as dog food. But it smells pretty good. Oh, uh, what is this? This is a question you should never ask, by the way. Just go with it when you're- just roll with it, hope for the best. If she tell- if they tell you what it is, it's go you're going to find it disgusting because it's something that you haven't had before. Just try it. It's stew. What kind of stew? Rabbit. A brief image of a cute fluffy bunny flashes across my eye. What is my character vegan or something? Like, what is this? Is something wrong? Okay. So. Um. Yeah, no, we're going nope all good. I'm all about trying new foods. Nothing's wrong, this is fine, thanks. I take a tentative bite of my stew. How is it? Adequate. No. Amazing. This is even better than I expected. Leanna grins as she digs in. I finish eating and Leanna cleans her bowl. Then the two of us head upstairs. She pauses in front of her room and I stop in front of mine. Good night. Good night. I'm about to enter my room when I hear a small voice. Polly? Oh. Looking down, I see the pongo back at my feet. Now that I think about it, ever since we entered the village, he's been awful silent. Have you been following us this whole time, or did you lose us and find us again? The pongo blinks twice and bounces. Boy, boy. Pongos aren't exactly welcomed everywhere. Why is that? Well, they absorb the energy around them, including crystals which are used to light lampposts or other similar items. Ah, I can see how that would be bad. I think this guy knew to stay out of sight once we came in here. Oh, that's probably why my cell phone died, right, isn't it? What if someone sees him here? As long as he doesn't stray too close to a crystal, he'll be fine. People only make a fuss when it looks like their crystal might be drained. Got it. She reaches towards the pongo. Do you want to sleep with me tonight? Poi! The pongo snuggles against my leg. Leanna sighs. I thought as much. She opens her door and flashes me one last smile. Sleep well. She disappears into her room. I open my door and step through. The pongo perks up. Boy, boy. <laughs> Let's let him in. I step away from the door and the pongo hops in. As I close the door behind him, he continues to hop around the room as if inspecting it. Yawning widely, I collapse onto the bed. The pongo continues to circle the room. Are you looking for a good place to sleep? Boy. He suddenly leaps up and lands on my bed. Then he bounces to the foot of the bed and wiggles himself a cozy nest by creating a small crater on top of the blanket. I can't help but grin at the little guy. Good night, Pongo. Boy, boy. I roll over in bed, and it's not long before I'm fast asleep. Ah. <sighs> All right, guys. Uh, yes, a knock on the door jolted me awake, but I think I'm going to uh, 
stop right here. We've gotten, what, about 30 minutes-ish into the game. I think this is a good place to uh, pause it for now. We've made it through our first day in this strange new world. Um, yeah. So, we made good progress. We made it to a town. We fell asleep. We got a new, uh, blob pet thing. Uh, yeah. I'll, uh, I'll come back to this one, uh, in a, probably in another week, okay? Until then, I'll see you all later. Peace out, guys.